a red light. I didn't mean that joke. <laughs> I saw a red light. I want to go to Lisa, who wants to talk to us about whether God created the earth and God existed. Lisa, are you there? Hi, Lisa. Yes, I'm here. Hello. Good evening. Thanks for calling. You're welcome. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Tell us more about uh, what we got written here. I believe that God created the earth in six days and rested on the seventh. Cool. Oh, I hear a beeping noise. Yes, I do hear a beeping. Um, Sorry. That's okay. The hot cool. pocket is ready. So the first thing I would ask is, why? Yes? So I'm asking, why do you believe this? Why do I believe this? Yes. You well, said, do you think the earth is created in six days? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I believe it. I'm just thinking if I say because I was taught it, then... I mean, it's in the Bible, and I was mm -hmm. taught it, and I feel like I've seen scientific evidence that supports that, that the Earth isn't really millions of years old, and... Sure. Okay. So, okay, you listed a couple things there. So, that's something that you were taught. Um, you believe there's scientific evidence to support it, and you think that the Bible um, also validates your claim, right? Um, is yes. It, okay. Yes. So there's a couple of different ways we can go there, Anthony. What do you think we should talk about first? I think it would be important to acknowledge that uh, you could possibly be taught something that might seem far-fetched that might really be true in reality. Uh, but then again, I could be taught something uh, by people that I love and trust, people that have never let me, you know, led me astray. They, they would never want to see me believe things that weren't true that could teach me something that isn't true. Um, are, are, you, are you willing to agree that a person could be taught something that is true or not true? That not everything that they're taught yes. is true? Okay. Yes, I believe that. Cool. Do you, you agree that it's conceivable that you could have been taught something that's not true? You mean about creation? Mm-hmm. It's possible that I was taught something that's not true, yes. And yet you think that you have other things to justify concluding that it's true at this point? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What's, okay. what's what would you say is the best thing? What's the, what's the best justification? The most solid reason why you're sure that that God created everything in six days? I'm thinking. Take your time. Thanks. The most solid justification that would make me believe it's what right. well, well, to be clear, I think we were asking, what is the most solid piece of, of the, the most solid reason why you think that it's true? We're not really getting into disconfirming it at this point. We're interested in what is that one thing that if you didn't have it, you wouldn't think that there was a God who made everything in six days and then rested on the seventh. Well, one of the things I believe is that God's spirit bears witness with my spirit, which I guess you can't measure that, but it's a very real thing to me. Hmm. What I guess what we're kind of getting to is how are you concluding that your God is real in the first place to get to the point where he would decide to create everything in six days? So let's dig down a little bit deeper then. How are you concluding that this God is real? All of creation declares him and praises him. All of creation? What is the it about creation orderly? that convinces you that there's a God? Surely you've met Bible people. Bible verses come to mind, huh? Bible, Bible verses. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking of Bible verses, but then I guess you would say there's not that that's real. I don't know. Well, I mean, I think I would ask you why you would consider the Bible to be a reliable source of knowledge on what's true and what's not true. Well, isn't that what faith is about? I mean, you take it by faith. What does faith mean to you? It's. It's 
something that might not look real, but you believe in it. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Something that might not look real? Faith is something that might not look real, but you still believe in it? To some people, yeah. I mean, you take it by faith. I mean... Are you taking it by faith that the Bible is true? And everything the Bible in it, is true. Yeah, that everything that the Bible says is true and that the God is real. Is faith the is faith the big linchpin here to this belief? Yes. Hmm. Would you use faith um, to come to the conclusion of other things being true? Such as well, anything really um, that you know that um, your mother or father exists, for example. Well, I know they exist because I grew up with them. Mm. So you have a different reason but than not, faith to know that they exist, right? Right. But I mean, when you sit down in a chair, don't you have some faith that it's not going to crumble underneath you? Mm. But are we using faith in the same way there that we're using it in the way that we're describing knowing the existence of something? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying really hard to think about this and and try to think, well, you know, what can I really say that will not seem empty to you? And I'm just not sure what to say. I'm not that great a speaker. No, I think you're doing really great. And sometimes people don't spend a lot of time thinking about these beliefs. So don't feel bad. I'm really glad that you called. I mean, I think it takes a lot of guts to call an atheist show or I don't know if you're, yeah. are you calling yourself an atheist show or? Uh, we're sponsored by the atheist we're community. We're sponsored by an a- the atheist community. I don't exclusively <laughs> call this an atheist show, but. My son put me up to this, okay? Hey, uh-huh. that's, I think that's wonderful that you're willing to go through and actually call the show. And so props to you, can really. I just, can I just talk about faith a little bit, a little bit more? Yeah, if that's go okay? ahead, go ahead. All right, so. You gave a great definition of faith and you gave a great example of faith. And it's a very common one. A lot of people will say that you, it might not look like something that's, that's believable, but I'm going to believe it anyways. That is close to the definition I think that you gave, or I'm going to sit in a chair and I'm going to take it on faith that it's going to hold my weight. It's a very common thing that we hear, but I think there's a, there's a big difference in the way that most people who are using it to conclude that gods are real or that holy books are a source of truth or that the the, the universe was created in six days and then rested, the, the, the deity rested on the seventh day. And that is a testing component. So I might, by your definition, use faith and sit in a chair and it holds my weight. But then again, I have a way of testing to see if my faith was not warranted in that situation. What would be a good way to test that situation with a chair? It might collapse under my weight. It might squeak and, and one of the one of the... One of the arms fall off or something like that. That would be feedback. The legs might look a little iffy. <laughs> yeah. There might be something about it, right? My point is, is that I, I think the way that you're using the word faith might be lacking a critical element, and that's the ability to test to see if the faith that you're applying to conclude that something is true is not reliable, is, is woefully inadequate to support the belief that you think is true. So... We might be throwing a lot at you here, especially if this isn't something that you normally talk about or think about. And and I don't want you to feel like you were put on the spot. But um, give us a little feedback. Like, has this been helpful to you? No, I don't feel, I don't, what I want to say, one thing is this, is my faith is very important to me because it's sort of how I'm able to look at the world and see I went through a lot of adverse experiences growing up. And, um, you know, the the son that put me up to this, he once commented, like, Mom, I'm surprised you're not in a gutter somewhere drunk or on drugs just because of what I went through. And I just, I look at it like, you know, God was there. Did God, does God want terrible things to happen to people? No. But I believe that he can sustain us and he can help us and strengthen us so that we're not overcome by them. I mean, I guess some people are overcome by them, but for me, it's been a rock in the midst of a lot of difficult things to understand that I I believe I can't have all the answers on this side anyway, because it's not heaven. But knowing that there is that to look forward to just means a lot to me. Mm. That's, that's really wonderful that 
you are able to use your faith in that way. Um, and I'm glad that faith works for you in that manner. Um, if you don't mind, I'd love to tell you a little bit about myself um, to kind of echo what you're saying. So I grew up in the Christian church, um, and I was a student leader for an evangelical ministry for a bit. And I also used faith as um, a tremendous, I would say, comfort um, for what I was going through yeah. in my life and what was going on. And um, I found a lot of great people in my community. Um, I did a lot of activities through them, and I thought I was doing a really a lot of great stuff for the world. But what I realized was when I was talking about faith that way, that never didn't have anything to do or with whether God was real or not or whether he actually existed. I realized that the comforts that I'm getting from this doesn't necessarily have to come from a faith position, and they could be from something else entirely. And actually, my faith didn't have, I felt the same way as you probably do right now, where I was kind of struggling for answers to kind of come up with a, 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 a better way than just kind of the empty fluff I've been told for a lot of my life of how to justify my faith. But I really found that I couldn't do it. Um, and that was really hard for me too. But what I got from that was, okay, I can either go back and try to look for better ways to justify my beliefs or I could change my beliefs. Um, and sometimes change is a good thing and we need to update our beliefs to match everything else that we find and, and see if it, you know, uh, corresponds with the background information that we already know. Um, and maybe that's something you want to consider for yourself or maybe you want to go back and find other ways to figure out why you believe what you believe. But it's important that we do have these discussions anyway and are able to talk about these experiences because they're incredibly important. I know it was very, very important for me. I, I, again, I really want to credit you, again, I really want to credit you for calling a show like this uh, to discuss this. And if you if you would, um, yeah, it takes guts. It really does. But I, I really encourage you to take a long, hard look at faith as you've defined it and ask yourself about, is this testable? And I recognize that the beliefs that you have because you think that this is true, in your view, they, they, they give you value. They've given your life meaning. You think that you've gotten through difficult times because there's an entity, there's a God who's helping you through it, who's watching you. Um, there's this wonderful payoff at the end, perhaps. Um, it could be kind of difficult to, to consider the possibility that that might not be true. But I would just right. encourage you to maybe just consider it, like investigate faith a little bit and Hey, if you find out that faith is not a really reliable way for getting to that conclusion, it just might be yourself who got through that difficult time. It just might have been you. Well, I mean, I believe that we all have different strengths and we have different personality traits. And, and I think that the experiences we go through shape how we respond to them to survive and stuff. But... I mean, that's the human part of it, but still I believe that in the part that gives me faith, I believe in that too. Mm. Let me ask you this then. If you think you were born in any other part of the world or in a different time period, would you rely on your Christian faith to get you through those hard times, or do you think you would rely on something else? No. If I was born and raised in China, then I guess, is it, do they, is it Buddha that's... Are they Buddhist mostly in China? They're probably not know. Christians. Yeah. They're probably not <laughs> right, Christians right. back then. I think, yeah, Chinese probably really rely a lot on ancestral knowledge and the gods that they believe in. So, I mean, I guess it's possible if I had been born there, then I wouldn't be the Christian that I am today. Hmm. But does that mean that what I believe is wrong because I could be different if I'd been born somewhere else? I don't think so. Yeah, not necessarily. Uh, I would agree with you there. But the reason why I brought that up is because you talked about how your faith was almost a result of your experiences and the way that you grew up. And I'm wondering if, if we can change some of the variables there about that faith, does it change the way that we think about it as describing true things? I don't know. Well, there are people who were born Chinese, raised Chinese, and then... In, and, and during their lives became very devout Christians. Mm -hmm. So 
Well, there's also people who were like me who were born very devout Christians and became atheists. But let's not let the main okay. point here. Let's yeah. not let let the main point get lost, though. Is that it's important to take? Okay. A, it's a very important to take a look at this core process that you're using to come to these conclusions. That everything that you're talking about, again, the universe being created in six days and then resting on the seventh, the holy book being true, that there's a, there, there's a God and all this. And it seems like faith is the big thing. So I think it could be useful if you were to watch this again, particularly the, the part where we were talking about faith, uh, especially how you're defining it, and see if it's if it is really as similar to the trust that you might put into chair, for example, as you think that it is because of that missing, potentially missing testing component. Okay. All right. Well, it's been nice talking to you. Yeah. It's been really nice talking to you. I hope you give us a call back. I won't yeah, be absolutely. here. absolutely. <laughs> Dan, I'll be here. I'd love to have you call back on this show. And um, if you want to talk to me more, I have an email address as well. It should be on the thing, but it's truth at atheist hyphen community.org. And that's for anybody who wants to talk to me about anything that we talked about today. Um, and if you are interested in coming back on, just send me an email there and we'll get you back on. And, and what's so funny? Okay. <laughs> I'm wondering well, what you're laughing. I'm laughing because my son did not say this is an atheist radio show. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry about that. Well, yeah, so that's... No, I'm, I'm totally not offended. Well, he and I, I have be... had a lot of really great... <laughs> So, so the reason why the, my email address says atheist is because this is part of the atheist community of Austin. Um, I don't actually okay. exclusively consider this show an atheist show, though. Uh, I actually have had okay. theist co-hosts on in the past. If um, you were on hold, you probably listened to how excited Dan was when a, a person calling about UFOs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <in>. Like, this <laughs> is a show about all kinds of beliefs. Um, and like, I'm not necessarily defending atheism on this show or saying that atheism is true, whatever that means in that sense. Um, okay. I, I'm more Maybe about, ex didn't say that. yeah, yeah. I'm more about exploring people's what, beliefs. What's that? Yeah. What's that word? What was the word you were using? Nathaniel? I think it was a word you guys, epistemology. Was that the word? Yes. Yes. What is epistemology? Why you believe something? Yeah, uh, epistemology is the philosophical study of why we think the things we think are true, or basically how we know the things that we know. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure talking with you. It's been really nice talking Maybe to we'll you, talk too. Again I appreciate your attitude, too. Right. It's been very nice talking to you. Yeah, Bye. absolutely. Thanks again. She was a joy. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. I hope she calls back. Yeah, that was great.